Good evening. Uh, I am Joe Sawyer, the superintendent of the Shrewsbury Public Schools, uh, and this is the one time each year uh, that I officially open the meeting of the Shrewsbury School Committee. Uh, as uh, after the recent election, they will be reorganizing this evening and electing their officers. Uh, first, would like to uh, uh, congratulate uh, Sandra Fritz on her reelection to the school committee, beginning her sixth three-year term, uh, which is an outstanding level of, of dedication to our community and our schools. Uh, I'd also like to uh, welcome Ms. Rachel Sharifapur, who was elected newly to the committee uh, for the other open seat. Um, and we'll be joining uh, Aaron Boucher to my right and Lindsay Heffernan to my left. Uh, Mr. John Wenske, the other member of the committee, unfortunately could not be here this evening uh, due to a death in his family. And so we send our condolences um, to the Wenske family. Um, so we will begin with the election of officers. And uh, per school committee policy, uh, I call the meeting to order. Uh, and uh, I am asking uh, for nominations uh, for the chairperson of the Shrewsbury School Committee at this time. Uh, I would make a motion to nominate uh, Sandra Fritz as a chairperson. Second. So a nomination from Ms. Fritz has been made to be chair. Uh, it's been made and seconded. Uh, are there any other nominations? Hearing none, is there any uh, uh, questions or debate on the issue? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All in favor of uh, Ms. Sandra Fritz being the chairperson of the Shrewsbury School Committee, please signify by saying aye. 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 And any opposed signify by saying nay. And it is unanimous. Congratulations, Ms. Fritz. And uh, at this point, I will turn the meeting over to you. Thank you. Do you want to switch now? We can switch. We we'll, we'll wait. Okay. We'll finish we'll that we'll <laughs> I would like to nominate for the position of vice chair, Erin uh, Boucher. Second. Any other nominations? Nope. There being none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Erin, you are vice chair. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'd like to nominate John Wenske as secretary. Second. Any other nominations? There being none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. So now we can move. Now we can move. Okay. That's the gavel. That's the gavel. <laughs> Ms. Fritz. Okay. So first on the agenda this evening is public participation. No one has asked to address the committee this evening. However, if anyone wishes to speak with us at the, during this portion of our meeting, you can contact the school committee at school committee at shoesbury.k12.ma.us. Next is chairperson and members report. Does anyone have anything this evening? No. Um, I would just like to congratulate the uh, high school musicians and the Oak musicians. I had the pleasure of attending um, some spring concerts over the last two weeks. Um, outstanding performances by um, all, all of the, the performing arts groups. And um, I'd also just like to make a special mention of the United Sound concert, which was a, a very special evening. Um, gr a, great, a great performance. They did a Disney medley and then a piece that was composed specifically for United Sound, which was wonderful. Um, and again, just a, a great program. And a, we are the only high school in Massachusetts that has that program. So I just wanted to congratulate all the musicians and their, their teachers on the excellent performances. Great, thank you. I'd like to mention a few of us had the opportunity, along with some of uh, central office staff, to attend the MOVE luncheon on for this past Friday. And that is an on-site vocational learning program for some of our students. And it was a great event. Um, I would like to thank Mary Simone, who is the general manager at the AC Marriott. And she's partnering with us to have our students go for this hands-on learning. It was, it was a wonderful event. Our guide was Carl. He was amazing, took us all through, uh, really did a great job. And I think this is one of the reasons why some of us run and want to do this. These are the really validating events that we go to. So it was a great uh, program. And now we'll move on to superintendent's report. 
Thank you, Ms. Fritz. Uh, I want to mention uh, certainly all those things were terrific things to highlight, and we are deeply appreciative of all the work that uh, those students and staff have done. I also want to pass along some other news from Shrewsbury High School. Um, our eSports uh, dynasty continues as uh, the state championships were just held. Um, our uh, Rocket League team uh, actually came in second place. They lost in a seven-game series uh, with the undefeated team from Tewksbury. And, uh, but they do qualify to play uh, in a uh, national championship that's taking place later this month by finishing second. Uh, the members of uh, the Rocket League team are Vincent Lamb, class of 25, Alex Anderson, class of 23, and Robin Oxley Luster, class of 23, uh, who is the captain. Uh, and then our League of Legends team uh, won the state championship uh, once again. And uh, uh, congratulations to those uh, students. Those include uh, Callan Fitch, class of 26, Isaac Wolfus, class of 25, Kenneth Nguyen, class of 23, Stephen Hu, a captain, class of 23, and John Q, a captain, class of 23. So congratulations to uh, both of those teams and to their coach, Nick Crefting, who was a science teacher at the high school, uh, on their great success. Um, I also want to mention uh, our class of 2023 uh, in and of itself received the uh, service award uh, this year from the United Way for the Area United Way as the Youth Volunteer of the Year, uh, collectively the Shrewsbury mm -hmm. High School class of 2023 uh, for all of the uh, community service that they have done in volunteering. Um, and Mr. Jeff Lane, who is the assistant principal and great administrator for the class of 23, um, accepted a, the award on their behalf uh, at South High School in a recent ceremony. Um, I also want to make mention of uh, three staff members um, who have recently uh, uh, received honors. Uh, first, uh, Ms. Jennifer Cuddy, who is a uh, science teacher uh, uh, at Shrewsbury High School, uh, teaches chemistry. Um, she received the American Association of Immunologists Research Award. Um, she'll be participating in a Diabetes Center of Excellence summer program through UMass Medical School, which will also involve a trip to a, a symposium out in California. Um, she'll be participating in cutting-edge research, and uh, it's a way for her to keep up with what's happening in the field scientifically, and then she can then inform her work um, as a chemistry teacher at the high school. So congratulations to Ms. Cuddy. Um, also like to recognize uh, Mr. Michael Lapamardo, uh, music teacher at Shrewsbury High School, uh, chorus teacher, uh, longtime musical director of our uh, high school musical, uh, also director of our fall play. Um, he is being considered for the uh, National uh, Grammy Music Educator Award. Uh, this is a national level award uh, that's dedicated to recognizing outstanding music educators. Um, he is now one of 212 quarter finalists across the United States uh, to be recognized at this point. Uh, and anyone who's seen Mr. Mm -hmm. the performances and known Mr. Lapamardo's work over time know that he is, is an extraordinary music educator and uh, hopefully will continue on uh, moving forward even further uh, because it's well deserved. Um, and then finally, Ms. Sarah Monica, uh, who is the longtime uh, teacher of the preschool program that's housed at Shrewsbury High School, the Little Colonials program, uh, qualified as a semifinalist for the Massachusetts State Teacher of the Year. Uh, Ms. Monica was nominated separately uh, by two different parents this year, uh, and the nominations were such, and then her initial participation in the program that she was selected as a semifinalist. Uh, she's informed me that she is not moving forward any further than that. Uh, which is uh, clearly a grievous mistake on the part of the state. Uh, but uh, obviously she feels very honored, and if anyone knows uh, Ms. Monica, very humble uh, that she uh, was uh, provided with this honor. Um, she's done outstanding work in that role uh, for many years, um, and she's looking forward to, in the not-too-distant future of welcoming him back. Uh, as they do each year, the uh, uh, graduates of the Little Colonials who will now be graduating from Shrewsbury High School uh, many years later, and uh, that's always a, a wonderful celebration. They do the same thing at Parker Road Preschool as well, and our elementary school has been doing a bit of those graduate walks as, as well, which is uh, turning into a wonderful tradition. Uh, but Ms. Monica is an extraordinary early childhood educator who's done outstanding work, not only teaching our preschool students, mm -hmm. uh, but also um, the reason that program is housed at Shrewsbury High School is that we have child development courses uh, where the high school students work with the preschoolers. So um, she's also working with those high school students and helping them learn um, to be effective uh, early childhood um, um, education uh, uh, students as well. Um, so congratulations to, to Ms. Cuddy, Mr. Lapamardo, and Ms. Monica on those significant recognitions um, and just uh, demonstrative of some of the excellence that we have uh, across our faculty. 
um, here at Shrewsbury, High, uh, Shrewsbury Public Schools, and in particular these three who are housed at Shrewsbury High School. And that is Superintendent's report this evening. Thank you, Dr. Sawyer. Our first time scheduled appointment tonight will be a report from our Student Advisory Council at Shrewsbury High School. Uh, they are required to meet with us throughout the year to give reports, and I believe this is your last one for this year. So if you'd like to come forward and have a seat. And then when you get settled, if you can just introduce yourself for those uh, watching at home, since we've all met you many times. Okay. Hello, my name is Nicole Shen. I'm a senior and I am a member of the Student Advisory Committee. Um, unfortunately, due to scheduling conflicts, Shalini and Anya were unable to attend this meeting. Thank you, so have, thank you so much for having us here today to share our agenda. And then my fellow members will now mm -hmm. introduce themselves. My name is Siri Rall. I am a junior. My name is Laura Lee and I am a senior. Student life. With the school year coming to an end, students are preparing for their next phase in life, from advancing a grade to graduating from high school. Starting off strong with everyone's favorite topic, AP courses, <laughs> much of the student body is relieved to be finished with their end of the year exams. This past year being the first that many juniors were eligible for APs, we're all grateful for the insight gained regarding our learning styles and also experience with very rigorous courses. Now that I have completed all of my AP exams and have decided where I'm going, my focus now shifts to making the most of my, the rest of my time here at SHS. I'm thankful for all the teachers, faculty, and classmates I've met along the way and hope that I'll be able to connect with them one last time during senior events. This final quarter of senior year has gone by in a blur. In these past 10 days alone, I've committed to college and completed almost all of my AP exams. As I prepare to say goodbye to the friends and classmates I grew up with, I'm reminded of how grateful I am to have had amazing teachers, a positive learning environment, and impactful extracurricular activities. After 12 years at Shrewsbury Public Schools, I'm ready to face whatever the future brings. Assemblies. On March 28th, SHS juniors attended the One Love Assembly. Teachers presented an important emotional movie called Escalation that portrayed an abusive relationship. Afterwards, they opened up a discussion for students where they talked about the signs of an abusive relationship and the, important, the importance of building healthy relationships. In addition, on April 27th, SHS held an assembly for juniors and seniors on driving. Jimmy Butcher shared a story regarding his daughter, Courtney Butcher, and her passing in a driving accident. He explained the importance of driving sm safely and smartly. It is safe to say that many juniors and seniors took the message to heart. Elections. The SHS halls are just now returning to normal, with hundreds of election posters being removed after campaigns are closing up. Whether it be through STUCO, officers, or Student Advisory Council, countless individuals are exploring different forms of student government. We look forward to hearing election results in the upcoming weeks. Co-curriculars. SHS students have had a great time getting involved with co-curriculars outside of school. SHS Sports. To start off, once again, a big congrats to the girls' hockey team for winning the state finals. The spring sports season is also off to a great start. In fact, just recently, we celebrated the 86th year of SHS's crew program at Lake Quinsigamond's Boathouse. During the ceremony, not only was a new wall of fame revealed, but we were all able to meet the legends that built up the program to where it is today. In fact, two new votes were added to the crew program from the University of Michigan, named the Jim and Babs Donahue and Ken Burns, in honor of the contributions they have made for the sport. In a similar light, SHS takes on a new sport, boys volleyball. We hope to hear more about them and continue to cheer on our spring sports. Speech and debate. Competing in their final Massachusetts competition of the year, students on the speech and debate team took on the state tournament. With two individual state champions, the team worked hard to bring home a second place sweepstakes trophy. Carrying this momentum, students will now be heading to Kentucky to compete in the NCFL Grand Nationals tournament and Arizona for the NSDA tournament. These are the most prestigious tournaments in the nation, and we are so excited to hear about the team's accomplishments. Robotics. After months of preparation, the Shrewsbury Robotics team launched into their competitive season, delivering excellent performances in two district qualifying competitions. Following an impressive third place finish at the Western New England District Qualifier and acceptance of the first Robotics Co Competition Creativity Award, Team 467 advanced to the 2023 New England First District Championship, where they were finalists. Congratulations to our robotics team for three successful competitions. DECA. 
Our DECA Business Club has recently sent 12 students to the state tournament. Out of the 12, five became state finalists who all qualified for the International Career Development Conference in Orlando, where 20,000 high school students from around the world would compete. HOSA. A new club, Health Occupation Students of America, started their competitive season this past month. For the past year, they have been preparing for their events and reading up on various medical concepts. In their first year alone, they have the most hosted members out of any other chapter in the state. They competed at qualifiers at Worcester State University on Saturday, March 18th. They now have 18 members advancing to nationals in Dallas, Texas in June. We wish them the best of luck. Events at SHS. Students have been finding ways to strengthen the SHS community through different events. Spring Musical. In a consecutive three-day showcase, members of the SHS Musical presented Babes in Arms. With incredible voices, dance numbers, and of course, acting performances, 83 students from all different grades gave us a beautiful story about a musical inside of a musical. It was a huge hit with the audience, with over 1,100 people in attendance. Coffee House. On Friday, March 24th, members of Shrewsbury High School's National Honor Society hosted their annual Coffee House. This is an event where students gather to, to watch and listen to live performances put on by their peers. The night included raffle tickets, coffee, and snacks. With more than 40 performers, the event was a huge success and had a great turnout. They were able to raise $1,334, and the money will then go to a charity of their choosing. Spirit Week. Spirit Week, held April 14th, was a huge success and the perfect way to show appreciation for our departing seniors. The rally started off with class events, such as trivia, basketball, dodgeball, musical chairs, and hungry hippos. We ended up cheering on the seniors as they walked off a red carpet lined by faculty and teachers. At the end of the rally, the Color Cup was awarded to the senior class. We wish them all the best of luck with their future endeavors. Spring Concerts. From April 25th to 27th, the SHS Performing Arts Department held their spring concerts. Mixed choir, freshman choir, jazz band, and concert orchestra kicked off the concerts on April 25th, followed by honor choir, treble choir, wind ensemble, and chamber orchestra on the 26th, and chamber choir, concert band, symphony orchestra, and united sound on the 27th. Symphony Orchestra, a collaboration of honors band and orchestra students and United Sound, composed of student mentors and special needs musicians, were delighted to perform after several months of rehearsals. Senior musicians are so glad to have made the Sea Wing their home in their high school years, and other students look forward to performing exciting new repertoire. Eid Celebration. On April 24th, Mus Muslim Student Club hosted an Eid Celebration for students of SHS. At this event, Student leaders of MSC recited parts of the Quran and educated us on Ramadan. The event also included a potluck and other activities such as a henna station. Under the Chinese Lanterns. We had previously scheduled to speak about Under the Chinese Lanterns, but due to scheduling conflicts, the event has unfortunately been canceled. So moving on, <laughs> senior events. <laughs> In the last few months of senior year, students have bonded through various senior events. On March 16th, the entire senior class gathered in the commons for the annual senior breakfast, which also marks the 50-day countdown. On May 19th, students, on May 19th, seniors will show their plans after high school by wearing college apparel for Future Plans Day. On May 26th, seniors will have one final prom at the DCU Center. And on May 30th, seniors will reminisce on their time at SHS during commemoration. Seniors are glad for these chances to have fun, recall their high school experiences, and spend time together before they part ways. And thank you for your continuous support of the SAC. Thank you. Any comments or questions for our girls? Lindsay. Yeah. I, I'm almost amazed you only have one conflict in scheduling, given the number of activities and things that are going on at the high school. I don't know how I see many members of the high school administration in the, in the house mm -hmm. this evening and thinking about the spaces that you have and the ability to pull off the, the number of things that you do is, in, is impressive. Uh, and, and it certainly seems as though the building is a buzz, let's say, with a lot of activity. I can't help but ask if I, if, if I may, for those who, a couple of you have been with us for a, for a little bit of time, and I believe this is our last SAC. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to know what, what you're going on to next, um, mm -hmm. as, as it really is a matter of complete curiosity, because we've appreciated having your participation in this uh, over the last few years. Laura, you want to go first? <laughs> um, I will be attending Carnegie Mellon University, majoring in cognitive science on a pre-med track. Awesome. Congratulations. Good. Um, I'll be up in McGill in Montreal, and mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing bioengineering. Am Excellent. Am amazing. And I, I also just I noticed the, the um, 
I, I, I'm not going to remember what that acronym stands for, HOSA Health Occupational something, something, um, uh, that um, I, the, the idea that we have a club dedicated to health occupations is something, the idea that we have somehow figured out a way to make that a competitive club too, those are that you gotta like, yeah, but, but that sounds like we're also really, really succeeding and doing awfully well. So I wish you both a lot of success in what sounds like some exciting careers, but mm -hmm. thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> thank you, I, I always say it's really beneficial for us to hear from the students because we're not that close to it you know I'm not my students are long graduated you know some of you still have students there but it, it just helps us have a better understanding of what the students are looking at what what's important what you're having issues with so we always appreciate getting these updates and I also want to thank Mr. Smith mm -hmm. you're a longtime advisor <laughs> and teacher I think it's it you've been doing it for how many years long time <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's a great thing to have. So thank you very much, and best of luck to the seniors. Enjoy senior week. Mm -hmm. this is, it's going to go by really fast, but this is the fun <laughs> stuff. APs are done, so <laughs> thank you. Dr. Sorry, any comments or questions? Uh, I just certainly uh, would like to thank uh, our SAC advisors and uh, you know, Nicole and Laura for their service and, and the, doing their last meeting as a senior and Siri as a junior mm -hmm. uh, representing uh, uh, the group. Uh, here tonight, and and I think that the uh, you know referencing the fact that there are so many different uh, things that our students have access to, uh, a whole variety uh, of of types of of opportunities, uh, everything from music and drama to athletics to robotics to these various clubs that we've spoken about. That when there are competitive clubs from speech and debate and to the newest one mentioned with Hosa and DECA being new this year. Um, it's just, it's, it's so impressive that our students work hard to prepare themselves and, and uh, maximize their talent. And so thank you, you know, congratulations to them and thank you to all their advisors who have, who have assisted them. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, we, we talked a lot about how uh, over COVID, one of the difficulties we experienced was that uh, because we weren't able to do these things, mm -hmm. the, the connection that students had to their school community was was unfortunately lacking. Just mm -hmm. it was not uh, we weren't able to do those things. Um, so to me, it, it, uh, I value them even more than I did prior uh, mm -hmm. to COVID. And I know that these are the kinds of things that, in addition to students' academic studies, um, make their high school experience a positive one for them. Uh, uh, other kinds of learning experiences and. Uh, ways that this is really a true, you know, full learning community, not only uh, a school that's focused on, uh, on academics, which is its core, mm -hmm. but there's so much more beyond that. So uh, thanks for sharing all those different things with us. Uh, congratulations to our seniors, and, and we're, we know that you have bright uh, futures ahead of you. Um, Syria, we'll see if you're, did you run again for SAC? I did. Okay, yeah. so we will find out <laughs> soon enough if you were reelected. But um, at this time, uh, we do have a certificate for each of you if you'd like to come up and, and uh, Acknowledge, uh, be acknowledged by the school committee and uh, receive this. Um, and how about for our audience, how about a round of applause for mm -hmm. our student advisors? <laughs> and we'll make sure that uh, uh, the other students uh, receive their certificates as well. In the front. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> mm, well done. Congrats. Congratulations. Well done as always. Nicole, congratulations. Well done as always. Okay, our next time scheduled appointment will be a vote for a world language student trip to Martinique. Uh, today we have French teacher Heather Ledger with us, and she's previously traveled with the Shrewsbury High School group to Martinique during the spring of 2019, and approval is being sought for another overnight field trip to Martinique during April vacation break of 2024. Uh, this is a cultural and linguistic trip for students that will allow them to practice the language they have been learning, and school committee policy 537 requires school committee approval for school-sponsored trips in excess of two nights for the first or second time. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Bazillo and Ms. Ledger. Welcome. Great. Well, thanks for having us. And <clears throat> as we just heard, we're ramping up. Activities have certainly ramped up, and we're, we're certainly excited to return to traveling mm -hmm. and showing and immersing our students in a different culture and practicing their uh, language skills or the acquisition, acquisition of their language skills. So 
Um, we're proposing a trip for next April vacation. Um, it's our second trip to Martinique. We did this back in 2019. In the summer. Um, we're targeting, we ran an initial survey to see if we had interest. We had probably 50, over 50 students initially interested. 70. 70 students initially <laughs> interested. <laughs> we, uh, again, following guidelines from previous travel, we'd have one chaperone per trip. Uh, the cost of the trip includes our airfare, the hotel, two meals per day, tour guides, various excursions, and as we've learned in the past, we, we strongly encourage travel insurance for, for families. Um, Mrs. Ledger will talk a little bit more about the, what she experienced at, in Martinique on the last trip to give you a better understanding of what our students would experience if this trip is approved, and we'll talk a little bit more about cost at the end. Thank you. Um, some of the things that we've had the experience, have the pleasure of doing is obviously speaking with the locals, being able to have the students be in an environment where really there is no English. Um, so they've had to manage and experience and speak with the locals and interact with them in several different situations. You can see from the pictures on, uh, on the presentation slides that we went and interacted with local schools, uh, with the local school with the children. We had um, drumming workshop, we had a uh, meal with them, had just basic everyday conversation, which was really nice for them to experience in a non-school setting, so to speak, at least for my students. Um, we also went to La Coal, which is on the left side of the screen. Uh, it's a cultural workshop by um, a, an individual Martinique uh, man, and he's trying to get the culture and the heritage of the country across to everyone. And so it was drumming, it was music, it was food, it was uh, preparation, it was everything that you could kind of um, imagine. It lasted almost the entire day, and at the end, it was almost like we had known him for, uh, you know, much longer than just nine hours or several hours. Um, students did not want to leave at that point. Um, in addition to that, we visited uh, a garden, we went to waterfalls, we went to um, the town where Mount, um, the volcano of Mount Pele had destroyed. Um, just a lot of amazing experiences and some of the things that just my students said is just that it was it opened their eyes to a new culture they were able to experience things in an authentic setting to be able to practice their language skills where they didn't have to uh, guess at whether they were going to understand or do something they were really living it which gave them a lot of confidence and um, no, they just had a wonderful time um, some of the things that uh, the reason why I chose Martinique was to get them exposed to, obviously, a, a French-speaking country where they wouldn't kind of be able to rely on someone to give them the English. And I also reflected on the reason why I would want them to go. Yes, it's a beautiful Caribbean island, but it is, in, uh, even more importantly, it's educational, it is cultural, it is linguistic, it is immersive, it is service learning, it is giving back, it is connecting, it is diversity, it is everything, or a lot of the things, certainly, that um, our tenants of, of Shrewsbury are, um, and you know, we're providing authentic, meaningful, real-world learning experiences. We're engaging students. We're empowering them to use their skills, to practice, to develop that confidence. To will then that will then follow through with them and follow them to college and in other endeavors. It's not just a one-time deal. It's not just wow, well, eleven days and then it's kind of forgotten. This um, and I've heard this from my students certainly recently, the ones that had gone that this will carry them through in other areas of their life, not just in French class, but in other classes in high school, then into college, then into their real life. So um, again, it, it's addressing the strategic priorities, and it's helping them to deal with the global world that we have now. There are different races, there's diversity, there are differences, there are things that we need to just kind of face and, and figure out how to deal with in a successful manner and with confidence, and I think this is a great opportunity for them to continue to do that. So these are, again, a couple of pictures of where we've been, uh, where, where we have gone and or where we will hope to go. Uh, en Starlet, that's just a nice little town um, that was one of our stops along the way, very typical Martinique village. Um, Yule sailing lessons, this was, I really wanted to do this last time, we weren't able to do this, but this is kind of like their national sport of these huge, really long, almost looking like a crew boat, um, but it's a huge sailboat. They have amazing races that they have in August. 
And um, my hope is that we're going to be able to uh, get an experience with that firsthand and talk to some people that have been doing that for a while. Um, but even, I think, more importantly is the history of slavery in, um, in Martinique, which is something that we can identify with, with our own history. And that's the Cap Sandis um, Slave Memorial that we were able to, um, to visit and kind of emotionally experience the last time we were there as well. So <clears throat> the cost estimate per person is thirty nine fifty. Um, I will credit Mrs. Ledger, who has already started to coordinate fundra fundraising activities. And it's important that we get this out ahead of time so students and families can plan accordingly. Um, we've already had, I think, one, one fundraiser and headed to the second fundraiser for our French club that could help support this. But also when students start to work, uh, this will be for upper level students, juniors and seniors, primarily with language acquisition skills who might be getting a summer job or have some sort of means or can plan ahead uh, prior to the, uh, the trip. So travel insurance is an additional $229, the best $229 a person can spend, quite frankly, on these trips, because um, it's like 100% canceled piece. There's all, all sorts of information within your packet. Um, and that's from our last trip mm -hmm. and the group we took. So yep. we'll have a, we're looking to have a larger group and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments? Uh, I'm just happy this, <coughs> that you're going to be bringing this back. Mm -hmm. I, I strongly support um, you know, making this available to students. I think it's a great opportunity for kids to experience another culture another la you know, and be immersed in the language. And it's just kind of one of those, um, like a, could be like a life-altering experience for kids, you know, really. Um, giving them a new perspective on the world, and uh, I just think it's it's great that we're able to offer it. So I, I strongly support. Um, Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, okay. Ms. yeah just a, a couple. Of, I also mm -hmm. like I'm supportive. I'm, I think the um, the a couple of questions, and mostly um, this is about sort of understanding our our hope and our breath for getting bringing travel back. So le somewhat less about the program you're you're putting forward here. Um, the is the, is the hope that we would have programs such as these covering each of our foreign languages is somewhat dependent upon whether our staff are willing to spend your April vacation with 35 students mm -hmm. um, or, and sort of how, how we're hoping to grow it. Because while I think it's really wonderful, I also would hate that a choice someone made in seventh grade about which language to take maybe, you know, maybe dictated whether or not these opportunities presented themselves. So I'm just wondering what some of the constraints are to bring these to fruition beyond the very obvious incredible amount of work to organize it, which I, I don't want to I see all of the de detail you provided us. <laughs> right. So I'll speak for Mrs. Ledger in a sense of having taken uh, my previous district <clears throat> going overseas to Italy for 10 days. It's not really a vacation. For no. <laughs> no. You're on 24 hours a day. Mm -mm. And with large groups, there's <laughs> things that happen that um, you have to be prepared for everything. So, yeah, certainly a willingness for our staff. I think the willingness is there, number one. I think the other piece uh, is looking at global security as well. I think the last, one of the trips we had in the past, we had to cancel as a result of some terrorist activity mm -hmm. in, in the content, uh, continental Europe. Um, and then the pandemic hit, we kind of moved right. away from that. So certainly we've traveled to Italy, we've traveled to Greece, we've traveled to France, we've traveled to Spain. We've, so we've done a number of uh, China trips. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our sister okay. school in Beijing as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's been a number of things that we've done. So yeah, continuing on and building back some of those routines are certainly we're looking at like a willingness for people to staff to volunteer their time and go over and mm -hmm. care for 20 30 40 students with other chaperones of course is uh is kind of mm -hmm. would be up to them yeah yeah no I, I i certainly am very appreciative to the staff who are willing to do it and i i also recognize you need to find some other chaperones to go with you with a one to ten ratio so i um i i I hope that is not too difficult. Um, well, there's a list already. <laughs> okay, great, great. I, you, I mean, you've, April is a rainy time here. You picked a good time to go to the Caribbean. Um, the other question, just can you, it's in your materials, but if you could talk a little bit more about if a, if a family thinks they can't afford it. That, it, that is, it's a high price point for families. And so um, how we hope to make sure that those individuals can still participate. You mentioned some fundraising, but is that fundraising sort of, are we thinking that that would be distributed, that you know, everybody gets thirty dollars off the trip, or that it's targeted towards kids who particularly need it. How how are you balancing some 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 th some different ways to handle that? Yeah. So in the past, what we've done is um, taken a look at the fundraising, and we haven't really discussed this sure. totally. Um, getting back on our feet from <laughs> COVID um, and travel, 
we typically students who volunteer for those activities will get a will get a share of the whatever the proceeds are yep. an equal share depending regardless of where they stand so for instance if mrs ledger would have four activities and you work for four activities for instance um a kids night out uh which we hold in the field house on saturday nights wildly popular with our mm -hmm. younger elementary students that can make a that can make a lot of money really quickly mm -hmm. uh, and they need a lot of volunteers so clubs and activities this year have, have participated in the kids night out and they've uh with student council and have kind of shared the profit from that so that's okay. one of those activities which i think you're already signed up for next okay. year <laughs> for one or two of those provides uh students who might be busy with sports and right. uh, religious things and care for other family mm -hmm. a lot of things that happen to people's families there might be opportunities to meet they can't hold a part-time job but we'll provide opportunities within the school day to do that so we're trying to hit the hit the spectrum and also we've uh in the past have also in limited capacity we just don't have a appropriation for this through the budget but we have had some student activity num student activity money where we can help people mitigate the cost when we travel to Beijing we've had donors mm -hmm. um we provide some scholarships for kids who we thought was we they needed it so it's really kind of as we go through that we kind of look at it. there's no really sure. set procedure though right no it, it, one right. could imagine you have, would have ways to look at kids who maybe apply who are we already know are qualifying for free to reduce lunch right their needs are clearly going to be greater than some who wouldn't so i'm glad mm -hmm. i'm glad you're thinking about it and i'm excited to see it i, I told i told dr sawyer this morning in my high school experience i went and spent a month abroad with my my public high school so i think those are just incredible opportunities if we can figure out how to manage it and it's a it's complicated to manage so thank you for willing your willingness uh, I think this is great I remember in high school that I went not to a, a country where I needed to use my language skills but um, we went to England and Ireland and I took so much back from from that experience and I think uh, going into college that made me a different person um, and it triggered other things of interest to me so I love I love this and I love the fact that they're also going to be giving back while they're there Absolutely. And I was so happy to see that trips were coming back. I think it's an opportunity for students at maybe their families aren't traveling, but uh, going toward with the fundraising, it might be a student who their family wouldn't go, but they might be able to go on a, tr a life changing trip through school. And I think that's just a huge opportunity. I never went on a trip in high school, but my, you know, my kids did. So it's like those things that they remember. And there was always a community service component, which I really appreciate and I know our packets had a lot more information in it so we, we really get to see everything I do have one question um, if you says about 70 students expressed interest mm -hmm. if there's more than 40 mm -hmm. would the tour service be able to do it and would we would you have enough chaperones if there is more interest then if there's more interest I don't think there's going to be any problem with accommodating them okay um, it might have to be that the group gets split into two on you know on like two different days you're like mm -hmm. we go one place and on one day and then the other group goes to another place so they have enough accommodation mm -hmm. um, but what I'm hoping is if there is enough if there's enough interest and depending on the age of the students that there is interest I'm planning if I if I have to come back to ask approval two years from you know next April, mm -hmm. then my 2026 plan. I've I've already told the students. I said, hey, if this gets approved, if, you know, if you're still interested, you know, and you're a freshman right now, there's the 2026. I I plan on coming back. I plan mm -hmm. on going back if that's possibility. Okay. So I mean, that's also another option. Perfect. Thank you, and thank you for bringing it forward and for chaperoning. Because I think you know it's hard enough to chaperone a school trip during the day. Never mind going to <laughs> a foreign country with a whole bunch of high school kids. So well, thank I, you. Ha I have to tell you, and this is for everybody. Mm -hmm. I I am teaching some amazing students this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've taught amazing students before, but this mm -hmm. the group that even the group that have um, expressed interest. I have taught almost all of them, mm -hmm. and I'm just I'm excited that they're excited, and right. hopefully that will just carry through into an amazing experience for all of us. Excellent. Thank you. Dr. Sorry, any questions or comments? I, I concur with all the comments made, and, and I want to thank Ms. Ledger for bringing it forward and her willingness to uh, work to provide this opportunity for our students. Uh, you know, we'll continue to look at the whole program and see over time what we might be able to provide uh, for students speaking and learning other languages. Uh, but I think this trip, for all the reasons stated, is a, a excellent educational opportunity for those who are interested mm -hmm. um, and with enough lead time to work on the financial piece uh, mm -hmm. as, as strongly as we can. So with that, I do recommend that you vote to approve. Okay, thank you. Okay, we need, do need to vote on this. So I need a motion to approve travel by Shrewsbury High School French students to Martinique in April 2024. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yay. Well, <laughs> well voyage. Yeah. You want to see pictures. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, we are going to have a report uh, around career technical education and career exploration. I'm going to turn this right over to Dr. Lazat, who's Thank been the lead you. on all of this. Thanks so much for having us here. Sure. And once everybody's settled, we, if they want yes. to introduce yes. yourselves, well, everybody at home. Well. So we're mm -hmm. really happy to join you this evening and share an update um, with you and the community that focuses on career technical education, career exploration, and related programming at Shrewsbury High School. We'll begin by introducing ourselves and continue with the student-led portion of the presentation. So Jane Lazat, Assistant Superintendent mm -hmm. for Community Partnerships and Wellbeing. Todd Vizzetto, High School Principal. Mm -hmm. Angie Flynn, Director of School Counseling at the high school. Mm -hmm. Kathleen Cohane, Director of Alumni Development and Community Relationships. Uh, Adam Harris, student. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Saldana, also a student. <laughs> Fabulous, thank you. I also want to thank Jess Rice and Sean Russell, two counselors at the high school who have been very instrumental in mm -hmm. these experiences. So we're going to begin. Adam is going to share um, some information about himself and um, an experience that has led him to next steps as that relates to life and college and career. Yeah, so um, like I said, my name is Adam, and uh, I attended the career day that Shrewsbury provided to the um, Fire Academy in Stowe. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty grateful that they brought me this opportunity because um, I've wanted to be a firefighter for a while now, but you can only like, really learn so much online. You know, so much of it's physical that you, you always have that anxiety of what if I do this stuff and I just don't like it or if it's too hard, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all that. So um, being able to actually go to the academy, be welcomed in, walk through, get a tour. Um, they even had water bottles with our names on it where we sit, you know, so it was, they really put together a nice show. But um, we got there. And we got to put gear on, uh, we had a tour of all the trucks. We, they um, did a huge propane fire. We learned about how different chemicals react mm -hmm. and um, how water reacts with gas fires. And uh, we did search and rescue drills. They had um, the burn building. We dragged hosts through it and did a simulated fire and um, learned commands and how to work together and stuff. And um, we, we all really bonded that day, too. Um, me and a bunch of my friends went. And uh, it was a good experience. They um, did a lot on their half, too. And um, this is a slide about why I feel it's important and uh, some photos to go along with it. So um, I thought it was you know, important, like I said, just because um, it just introduces kids to a new career path and especially uh, the fire service. There's not, there's not a huge like um, pull to it for a lot of kids, you know? Um, and I feel like a lot of it is just because it's not like super advertised on the first thing that pops into a lot of people's heads mm -hmm. when they think about like jobs for the future. Um, I know everyone drives by the fire station stuff, I'm sure, every day, but I don't know. A lot of my friends just were like, oh, yeah, I never thought about that, you know? So um, this definitely put a broader spectrum on it, and um, I feel that it was beneficial to everyone. Uh, my friend Matt Anderson will be attending it this year, and um, he's really, really excited because he's always been interested in what I've told him about it. So um, it could open up a new future for him, too, which he's excited about. Yeah. So Adam, quick, yeah, sorry, ahead. so uh, just a question. I. This came as a result of um, a community contact we had with Dr. Sarah Walsh. Sarah Walsh is the Director of Educational Services at the Fire Academy. Uh, I know her. She reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in sending kids to the Fire Academy? I said, yeah, absolutely. And I think it, we started planning over a year and a half ago, and Adam went last year with a group of about 10 or 12 kids. We're sending again another 10 or 12 to the Fire Academy again. Uh, I think it might be next week. Mm -hmm. So they have a full day of uh, experiences. I'm just curious because I've seen this slide. Maybe you could talk around the four slides, Adam, of what for people either in the viewing audience or in the audience here about what each slide is and kind of your own kind of experience there. Yeah, so um, the first slide, you can see um, that blue door, and that's like a two-way door, and you put um, shims in it, and you practice breaking through. Um, you learn different techniques with axes and halligans and... Um, <laughs> get experience on what it's like to break through a door and uh, they always tell you to make sure it's unlocked first because <laughs> a lot of a lot of the new guys always want to run up and bash it through but sometimes it's unlocked <laughs> so um 
you got experience with that. Um, and I've never broken into a door before, so that was definitely something to check off the list. And, uh, Good to know. <laughs> yeah, and on the right we have our uh, propane fire. That was all us standing in front of it, and it was really, really hot. Um, we were all complaining about our eyebrows and everything after. <laughs> but, um, it was fun. And they were spraying water on it to jazz it up a little bit in that photo, which we did a pretty good job at it. Um, on the bottom left, that's a search and rescue drill uh, we performed. They let us um, teamwork and command, and there's a lot of rules into it, um, which is taking place. If you're the leader, you have to know where everyone is, and there's only 20 people that can go into doors, and then you have to, um, they told us all about like houses that might have a hoarding problem, all sorts of things. Um, which they had a bunch of furniture, which you can't really see in that photo, but they had couches and chairs and tables and everything in there that you had to um, navigate and everything like that. Then on the right, bottom right, we have um, the burn building. And that was a building that we drug hose through and we learned all different techniques that would work through it. Um, they, they were very, very uh, specific about everything. Like the, we had like, we tried everything and we tried, they let us kind of fail first, you know, and mm -hmm. then let us go through, they taught everyone everything. So. It was, it was really way more than I expected. So I was pretty happy about that. What are you going to do next year? Yeah, uh, next year, um, through the hard work of my teachers <laughs> and me, uh, I got a scholarship to go to Anna Maria to study uh, fire sciences and uh, emergency management. So I'll be awesome. taking those courses next year and um, mm -hmm. hopefully be volunteering at the Paxson Fire Department while I'm attending classes. Excellent. Great. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Louisa. Hello. Picture here. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm Louisa. Um, first off, I want to thank you guys for having me here. Um, I job shadowed last year at Shrewsbury Federal Credit Union, um, April 11th to be exact. Um, I chose it because it's very close to home. Mm -hmm. So nearby, super close. I was like, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to try something new. Um, I didn't have a job, so I was like, maybe, you know, you never know. So <laughs> I got, I was selected to job shadow. Um, I went in, I spoke to all the tellers, um, those who managed loans. I spoke to people upstairs who managed like all like the checks, the CEO. Um, and that day, it was just very much like learning and like taking notes about like all of like the different like types of like sections in the bank. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, so that's how I went for that day. And I spoke to Chris, who is my like boss manager now. And she was like, oh, would you be interested in a job? I was like, of course, like, yeah. never say no to yeah. such an amazing question like that. And she was like, great, I'll give you a call back. So I've been there for a year now. Um, it's taught me a lot of responsibility, a lot of maturity. Um, it gave me a sense of adulthood, for sure, because you're just listening to conversations that you probably wouldn't listen, like, around a bunch of teenagers. Yeah. You're just, like, working with a bunch of adults. Um, but yeah, it's a very useful, um, I really enjoy it there. Um, I also referred my friend, who is also a student at Shrewsbury High, she also enjoys it very much. Um, we work together. We have most of our shifts together. Um, and we actually just got a new student who job shadowed again. I think it was in February this time. He's a junior. His name is Fawaz. Um, he enjoyed it as well. We had, we had a couple of job shadowers this time. Last year, it was just me who job shadowed at um, SFCU. But I was very, very happy to see um, all of the students who were like so like interested in job shadowing at the bank. And so he um, got an opportunity to work there too. So now it's all three of us from Shrewsbury <laughs> High. Um, it was really great. And I also had the opportunity to speak at the job fair at the Shrewsbury High School. Um, I just was behind the table and I just saw all my friends there and I was just like, kind of felt out of place because it's just a bunch of adults. But I was like, well, if you try something, you'll get there. So um, I spoke about my experience, and that's how it went. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Felisa. Um, so the focus on career technical education and career exploration is 
Louisa and Adam have referenced, was part of our 2018 through 2022 strategic priority, connected learning for a complex world, um, with the goals of providing opportunities that help students develop independence after graduation, including exposure to career choices and development of skills and financial literacy. In addition to building community partnerships with businesses and in institutions and individuals, in order to increase access to experiential learning and career awareness. Our newly adopted strategic plan um, includes the following goal, advance career and technical education, strengthen all students' post-secondary preparedness by expanding access to career and technical education, evaluating course offerings, and exploring pathway opportunities. Um, we are committed to developing career technical education options for um, Shrewsbury High School students while actively engaging them in the process. And as our students have referenced tonight, student voice is foundational to this work. We need to know what it is they're interested in. Sometimes they don't know, um, but by, by providing opportunities to students, they um, more fully understand and appreciate what they like to do and what they maybe aren't interested or don't like to do. Um, so here is, a, we have a couple of pictures here um, um, as they relate to our strategic plan under career, advanced career and technical education. On the left is uh, Chris Jane, one of our high school students, is at Olympus. This is during um, April vacation and working here with a medical technician, designer, and engineer. On the right, there's a picture of students um, listening to um, an attorney who practices in Worcester at our Oak Middle School Grade 7 Career Fair. So we continue to work to provide opportunities and expand access um, to students. Um, and as you know, the um, change in the admissions policy at Assabet Valley Regional Technical High School had a significant impact on this year's ninth grade class and will continue to impact students in the current eighth grade class and in the years to come. Unfortunately, the town of Shrewsbury's efforts to join the Assabet district um, were denied by the Assabet School Committee. This decision mm -hmm. undoubtedly has a detrimental effect on those students who would have attended ASABET, and it is our responsibility, our collective responsibility as a community to mitigate this situation. We are committed to developing career technical education options for Shrewsbury High School students while actively engaging them in this process. Many efforts have been undertaken and are described in the report that you have um, with you, some of which will be discussed this evening. So here are a couple of the action steps as those relate to our current um, or our strategic plan moving forward. Okay, so yes. Yeah. One of the um, efforts that we created are these career pathways. So in the winter time, uh, Mr. Bazidlo and myself, along with the high school leadership team and the counseling department, looked at our courses to create course sequences to develop different pathways and we have um, we came up with six different pathways as you can see up here biomedical business um, child care computer science engineering and tv production and film and this is with the courses that we already um, have and offer our students at shrewsbury high school um, so what we did is we created these pathways and then we sent out a letter um, explaining the pathways to we first targeted students currently in eighth grade and students in ninth grade that applied to ASABET. so ninth grade students who applied last year and then the current eighth grade students and um, counselors actually personally reached out to those students they called families on the phone and explain the pathways and offer them to sign up for these. And then once we did that, we also sent them a mass mailing to the entire class, so the entire eighth grade class and the entire ninth grade class. Um, and from there, you can see what our results are. 39 students in the current eighth grade class chose these pathways, and then 22 students in the um, current ninth grade class. 
The column on the right should say rising grade 10. Sorry. Oh, that's why. Okay. I don't know yeah. what happened. Okay. So, yeah, rising grade uh, 9, rising grade 10. Um, and so Dr. Lazat and I have been doing a lot of work researching different programs and partnerships that we can um, offer our students. One um, thing that we are doing is we're going to apply for the Department of Education Innovation Career Pathways Grant. Um, so we are learning about this grant, we are attending webinars, and um, it's due, the first part of it is due to the state June 15th. So. Um, along with Dr. Uh, Mr. Bazidlo, we're going to work on that uh, for the June 15th deadline. Um, another very exciting opportunity is Dr. Lazat and I went to the Blackstone Valley Hub. We had an awesome visit. I'm doing some welding in that photo right there, <laughs> <laughs> something I never thought I'd do. But um, anyway, so they are an organization that can really offer a lot of different pathways for our students. They have um, a manufacturing pathway, and they do that right now with um, students at Milford High School. So that's something we can look into. Mm -hmm. um, they have a welding certificate program. They have um, intro to electronics. They offer even just exploratory workshop courses for students that we want to bring over there. So we're meeting with them to try to learn what we can, how we can partner with them and what we can do to offer our mm -hmm. students. And then finally, um, through the Colonial Fund, um, we're using this funding to sort of just further this initiative. We thank everyone who has really, um, you know, donated money to this. Um, we're going to use these funds, hopefully, if we get the Career Pathways Grant into also working with the Hub, um, and it's really sort of appreciative to move this initiative forward. Uh, we're also increasing our access to our Project Lead the Way at Shrewsbury High School. So we have um, different courses through Project Lead the Way, specifically engineering and biomedical. Um, and as you can see, this is our course request from course registration back when students chose courses in March. Um, and what we did this year is um, we added a 1.0 full um, FTE to the science department so that we could really sort of help meet the demands of um, these choices, specifically the alternates. And you can see in the engineering, like Explorer Technology, we had 106 alternates, and Robotics, 121 alternates. <coughs> so we're hoping that this, um, this will definitely like increase access for these students to take these courses. So um, you know, even in the future, we're looking to increase, have more FTE to increase these chances for our students to take these courses. And as we talked about <clears throat> during program of studies uh, back in January, I believe, mm -hmm. um, we talked about um, how we're seeing, experiencing an increase of chatter around students around the demand. And this is a more recent development. If you look at this, again, through the course selection process, um, we're finding out that we're not, we're not going to be able to meet the demand of, of everyone that wants to be within this pathway in terms of electives. So, um, certainly doing our best to allocate FTE, but if you just look at the numbers, these are some of the most popular uh, electives right now, and it's something that's more recent news than, than a long time coming. But we have been seeing this, and as we, as we changed some of the programming last year or two, we've seen like this kind of, we thought we'd see it, and now we've actually seen it. So there's definitely demand for that business course, and in Louise's experience, I'm sure if we had this programming for her, she'd probably be involved in it. Um, <laughs> Some of the challenges as we move forward around pathways, you know, and I think the school community knows this, and I'm sure the community, uh, if they haven't been paying attention to or watching previous meetings, is that we utilize basically 98% of our, our footprint and space available at the high school for existing programming. So we, have, we don't have a lot of room. Um, and as you know, through the MSBA, they reconfigured the square footage allowances. So we have a variety of different student needs, and that has exceeded the, our building design. So again, we have very limited space. Uh, a, a good news story for us around space is that the RISE program will move to Maple and Main. Mm -hmm. That frees up some space for additional sections and classrooms. It's not a lot, but we will have some availability that can relieve some of the pressure. It's not like huge pressure. I mean, it's not a huge space, <laughs> but it is some pressure. So that's a mm -hmm. kind of a, that's a, a double good news story, but we still will face challenges with space 
particularly around really technical programming, which requires a lot of square footage mm -hmm. around OSHA regulations and things like that. So we have to continue to work through those things. Again, <clears throat> we talk about OSHA regulations. We talk about next slide around equipment. Highly, some of this equipment is really highly technical mm -hmm. and costs a lot, uh, costs a lot and has a lot of capital expenditures. Um, for instance, um, if you look at you know w if we look at some of the programming that we've seen at other schools like Uxbridge, I know Leicester High School. I met with the principal of Leicester on, I believe that was Friday morning, mm -hmm. um, to talk about what they were implementing through their high school. They have a similar challenge in, mm -hmm. in their community, uh, and they're looking at the advanced manufacturing, or, or it's called computer integrated manufacturing through Project Lead the Way. We talked about what that would look like in the square footage. We also are looking to enhance our biomedical by potentially purchasing a virtual dissection table, which they have at Uxbridge High School, which is a really neat device, but all this stuff is really, really expensive too. Mm -hmm. So we have to be thoughtful, and it's not something that we can just come to you and say, yep, we're gonna need all this equipment. We have to be very planful about what we wanna do, uh, and that has to be included in, and certainly in budget planning in the future. Um, and the other piece, if you just go back to the second sure. bullet, is like, well, it's gonna require some really specialized staff training. Uh, and we'll talk about the staffing in a minute, but the equipment isn't isn't necessarily things our traditional teachers would be able to run, per se. Uh, certainly, the, the dissection table is going to require some training, but it's a little bit different than maybe machining or whatever it would look like for the computer-integrated manufacturing program, which we've looked at. Um, again, I, I'm repeating myself here, but basically, uh, we need staff who have strong technical skills and also a strong ability to relate to students and be able to really pull them in and, and engage mm -hmm. with them and have them invested in what they're doing. And that takes some special people for sure. Um, and certainly when we look at that, we look at what we can do to uh, enhance our internship program and job shadowing programs, which takes a lot of coordination. I think when we started the uh, internship program, oh goodness, it might have been, it was probably pre-COVID, it was myself and the, I think we had three assistant principals at the time. We didn't have any FTE, so we all took a caseload of students. So I think I had a caseload of 12 students that I managed on top of my regular job. And Mr. Nevada had some, Ms. Monopoly had some, and Mr. O'Connell had some. And we had these groups that came together between 12 and 15 students that went out for a work study, rather not internships or job shop, but a work study that we had to manage all that. And again, that just requires another body to, to coordinate all that work, to get in touch with em employers, to follow up and do site visits, to check on... Um, timesheets to conduct activities like resume building, career career and career readiness skills such as interviewing, how do you email, mm -hmm. uh, a professional email. So all these things would require potentially someone like almost a coach to help them get through that stuff. Ready? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> we talk about how we get to some of these opportunities. It's, it's transportation. Certainly challenges would arise with this. Um, uh, voc vocational technical schools don't typically provide transportation for these experiences. For instance, uh, seniors at a vocational technical high school would participate in a co-op program during their senior year. Mm -hmm. Those seniors are responsible for transporting themselves to and from their job placement. And if there's not, if they don't have that transportation, then ones that, what ends up happening is those students from the vocational technical high schools will stay in the building and conduct like a senior capstone project or some other experiential learning activity during their shop time, during their weeks of shop. So we have to consider ways that we can uh, provide some of this uh, and provide those experiences. Uh, we certainly are appreciative of the Shoes Free Federal Credit Union's van that we've used very uh, robustly, for lack of a better word. It's always in operation, transporting students back and forth to these activities. So that's something that we've considered. Uh, but transportation is another challenge of how do we get through uh, those things. And last, but certainly not least, um, I'll keep, well, <laughs> student engagement is difficult. We have, um, I think, we can all say this, and sorry, Adam and Louisa, we <laughs> have you. done tons of outreach to students, mm -hmm. Schoology posts, emails, one-on-one -on -one conversations, mm -hmm. job fair, signs, mm -hmm. QR codes. Um, and although we feel like we're engaging, we're not getting the return on the investment. I feel that uh, for whatever reason, student participation has been challenging at times. I'm not sure if it's demands of family or if it's just like, I heard you, but I'm not listening. There's a lot of that happening. And some families have said, I don't know anything that's going on. It's like, we've, we've done a lot of this communication. Yeah, 
we have morning announcements, we have uh, TV announcements. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot around it to try to communicate to high school kids. It's like, how much do they hear, how much do they listen, and how much do they come home and report back to their families of what they've seen and heard during the school day is often challenging with teenagers. If you're not in one of those families that doesn't have that, congratulations. Uh, I happen to live in a family where I'm like, what's going on this week? Um, did they talk to you about this? Yes, okay, all right, great. Um, so certainly, uh, we put in there no shows. It's been uh, we, we've had some challenges with that, and we certainly have to do some more, continue to do more follow up. But I think that I think people around this table have done a lot of good work around trying to communicate, engaging students, and bringing multiple employers. And I think it's been absolutely a, a fantastic effort o over the last year, year and a half. Thank you. Well, that was a nice segue. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> So um, I, we wanted to give you a little bit more detail on what we've really been doing um, throughout the, this past year. And uh, Louisa and, and Adam have touched a little bit on that as well. Um, but we've, we've literally held at least one career exploration opportunity just about every month um, over this past school year. We've had three career fairs. Um, the, the, we had a, one at Shrewsbury High School in April 2022. That was our first ever career trades fair. And then we had a second one this past February, and then we had one at Oak Middle School for the seventh graders. And every time we did one, it got better. Um, each event um, just had, had more um, businesses in them and, and more students attending. In April 2022, we had 12 businesses uh, or trades or post-secondary options, and we had six alumni attending that event. And we thought that that was really great until then in February, we ended up with 35 different <laughs> <laughs> careers, businesses, trades, post-secondary options, et cetera, and 11 alumni who engage with us. And then because Jane and I were getting so good at that, <laughs> Oak Middle School asked us to, to find um, people to volunteer and represent different careers. We had about 60 of um, 60 careers and then six alumni who um, participated in that. So we, we expect that we'll continue to be able to sustain probably 35 or so businesses at, at career fairs. We held two uh, Shrewsbury High School job fairs. Our first ever was um, in November, this past November. We had just six businesses and one alum that, that came, um, but we, uh, the, we held it after school in the Commons. That's okay, I can keep talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was after school in the Commons. Um, it was just from two to three o'clock, um, but that we intended to hold it because we knew that local businesses were looking for kids to work over the, the holidays, um, and that was very successful. We had several alumni that were there as well um, with their businesses. And then um, the second one was in April, and we had 10 businesses and, and two alumni who were there as well. We had um, several, besides job fairs and career fairs, et cetera, we actually were getting our kids out into businesses. So rather than having the businesses come to the school and um, the kids interview, we actually sent our kids out to different businesses. So our first job shadowing was in April um, of 2022. We had um, several places that, that students had gone to. Um, we've had overall, we I think we've had about 100 students register over the course of, of these vacation um, job shadowings. They were always in, in April of last year, February and April of this year. They learned about, and the uh, students that attended them learned about and sometimes received hands-on training for things like sports management, child care, research, lab work, animal care, marketing, finance, um, customer service. Um, they worked in construction or learned about construction, electrical, work linemen, home inspection, interior and architectural design, manufacturing, and medical technology. And the, the businesses that participated included the Worcester Red Sox, Stepping Stones Learning Center, Nyla Labs, Charles River Labs, Shrewsbury Federal Credit Union, of course, um, Shrewsbury Building Commissioner, um, the Component Sources International, Olympus, Clinton Savings Bank, Selco, and Lofty Homes. So huge variety of, of different experiences that, that the students had. We've also had two, um, or we've had multiple external learning experiences um, where we were able to bring our students, and they weren't exactly job shadowing, and it wasn't it was really more career exploration. I'm still on the first slide. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry. All right, great. Um, and those were like the Worcester Sports Summit, and that was in, back in February. We actually got a, a van load of kids, and, and, um, and Sean and, and Jess went mm -hmm. to there and, and took the students there, and the kids got to experience a whole bunch of different opportunities working with sports that are in Worcester. And then um, Firefighting Academy um, was one that we had already touched about. 
upcoming, we have opportunities to bring students to the Worcester Bravehearts on June 16th and get a pre-game tour of the facilities there and learn a lot about sports management and what it takes to run a, a ball team. Um, we also have other summer programming um, potentially at Olympus, um, and that's a medical technical um, business. Marvel's Semiconductor is also talked about uh, hosting our students. And then in the fall, um, we have opportunities to bring kids to a program called Youth in Motion Conference, and that's at Springfield College. Um, and that is where the students will learn about um, things like adventure, education, phys ed, um, coaching, um, career exploration and nutrition, health promotion, things like that. Again, offering a, a broad variety. We've had a, at least one internship offered, and that was through um, our engagement with our, our alumni. His name is Darius Corcoran. Some people might remember him. He's from the class of 2012. He offered to Chris Jane um, an opportunity to work with him in the IT department at Millis Public Schools for the summer. Lastly, our um, Jobs for Students site was something that we felt um, students were demanding to know and also local businesses were learning or demanding to find kids to be able to to be um, employees and not everyone could attend the, the job fair that we held so we said why don't we create a site where kids could log in and, and connect and, and once we started it and advertised it there were several other businesses that said hey could you put this business out here and every single, um, oh, let me back up, we created it back in November and it gives the, the students really easy access to available jobs. Um, every job is listed with a full description with complete instructions on how to apply, including links to the contact person, their email, the website, etc. Since the, the, the Jobs for Students site was created, we've used Google, Google Analytics and we have seen that, that since November it has had over 7,130 unique views mm -hmm. with an average of four minutes spent on, on the page or on the site itself. And then 83.56% of the people click on a link and exit out. I confirmed mm -hmm. this with our IT department. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I ran the analytics several times. So I know that that means that people are using it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's really no other way to know whether or not that's a successful site if, if mm -hmm. students are actually getting jobs through there. And at this time, we have about 27 different jobs listed. And every couple of months or so, we send an email out and we ask, uh, do you still want us to list this job? And um, people have, have very infrequently have said remove it, or sometimes they just need one job and, and I do remove it. So it's, it's pretty up to date. And we also stack it so that it's the newest jobs are first, mm -hmm. including summer jobs are actually at the top. Um, and we give information to the kids also if they're under 18 that they have to get a, a, um, a work permit. And we give them instructions on how to do that as well. So what did all this lead to? Well, <laughs> some paid employment. So there's been about, what? Oh, no. no. There's been about 12 students confirmed hired so far out of all these different programs, um, though I'm sure that there are more because we just had a job fair and there were a number of very interested students in some of the jobs that were being offered. Um, and five of those were actually from alumni connections from um, Tony No, who's a class of two, uh, 2000, who owns Lofty Homes, Darius Corcoran that I just mentioned, and Jeff Abbott, who is a class of 98, and he um, works for Creedon and Catering. So more on that later. So we wouldn't be able to have all of these job opportunities, career fairs, um, job shadowing, et cetera, without local business support. So we've engaged about with over 60 different companies. Um, sometimes there's different overlaps in the, the people that are attending the, the, um, the different career fairs and job fairs, et cetera. And we started that with this fall in October. We had our second business and community partnerships breakfast. And 10, student, uh, 10 businesses attended. We had six students that came and talked to the businesses, said this is what they, what they want to learn about. Um, the businesses um, gave, the students gave feedback to the businesses. The businesses took that and were very excited to be able to join our career fair and our, and our job fairs as a result of that. Our businesses, such as uh, Shrewsbury Federal Credit Union, of course, um, Charles River Labs, Lofty Homes, and Creating Catering, catering are consistently available for supporting and mentoring our students at the, the career fairs and job fairs. So we're very, very grateful to have their support. But this past spring, Olympus, um, which is one of the newer companies we've been engaging with, went above and beyond by offering a full STEM day for up to 30 students. And this was, this was like the highlight of my spring. Because um, mm -hmm. it was really very exciting. You can see here, um, I'm going to explain, on the bottom, on the top, that's um, uh, um, Conan, True. Drew Conan. Um, that was speaking with um, our business representatives at the, at the community partnership breakfast. And then on the lower left are students that are actually using probes in a real sheep's heart. 
And inside the probe is a little tiny knife, and they got to be able to cut. I'm sorry if it's, it's a little graphic, but they got to um, cut, make cuts using a little knife that was attached to their, to their probe. And this is what Olympus um, creates, the type of medical devices that they create. So the kids were actually able to use them on um, a sheep's heart. And then on the right-hand side, they're using a probe inside um, human lungs that actually they were inflating as the kids were working on it, which was really, really fascinating. So I really enjoyed that. That was really a lot of fun. So what they did by offering a full STEM day was the kids were there for probably about uh, three or four hours. Um, they actually had the president of the America's Olympus, Olympus, Olympus's America branch. He actually came and spoke to the students. He was the first person to address them. Then they had a Q&A panel where they had three um, employees who just talked about their career paths there and none of them were direct. None of them said, this is what I went to school for, this is what I wanted to do, and this is where I ended up. None of that, it was all telling them um, basically to, to keep their eyes open for different opportunities, um, to be networking, to be listening to somebody who might tell you, like, you might be better for this job, you know, I know you came in for that one, but mm -hmm. this one might be better for you, et cetera. So they had a Q&A panel um, and, and lunch with the employees. The employees sat and they talked to the kids, um, very engaging. They gave career advice such as be true to yourself, always have a plan B, do, network, and don't un underestimate your ability to do the things that scare you, which is one of my favorites that, that Ed Edwin had said. They had multiple hands-on activities, as, as I showed there. They um, received presentations on lasers that they use in order to break up um, kidney stones and things like that, um, software quality assurance, and they had people um, who spoke to them about upstream marketing and downstream marketing, which I think we both learned a lot that, that mm -hmm. day as well. Um, and at the end of it, the employees offered their emails and LinkedIn connections to the students afterwards, and they were very happy to be able to say, if I can do anything for you in the future, I'm very happy to make that available. So there were so many pictures that we took on this site, and so I mean at this this particular place, that I really encourage you. We gave you a, a link of where to go. Um, it's also on the career exploration site that we have as well. Um, more descriptions of you know what the kids were able to do there. So that was that was a highlight. So besides businesses that are physically here or that we that are offering their physical space to um, to the students, we also have had um, one very. Um, a generous donor, uh, Win Waste Innovations, who's, who's gave, has given donation towards um, career explorations as well. So there's a variety of different ways that, that local businesses have been able to help. So then, next one. So besides um, having help from our local businesses, our alumni have been absolutely incredible, and it's another favorite part of my, my particular day. So um, since I think last year when we were here presenting, we were talking about a new networking site and how we were going to be engaging more alumni. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we could not, we can't even begin to thank the way the, the alumni have been helping mentor our students and offering opportunities to them. So first of all, um, we have, um, we've been able to have alumni come back and speak um, in classrooms as guest speakers. And we had Tim Halley who came back, um, he's from the class of 2015, he gave a presentation to um, Jason Andriola's um, class. Um, we've had alumni, uh, a, a town government official and alum that I just found out today called David Snowden, Snowden from the class of 2001. He was also a guest speaker at the high school. And then um, Mike Coulihan, who's a personal friend of, of PJ's, I guess. Um, he's a class of 94. He gave a presentation to juniors and seniors about his 26 years in, in his um, military service. So, Consistently, we can count on um, our, our alumni like Tony No from the class of 2000. He's from Lofty Homes. Um, he was able to give um, an, uh, a, one of our students a job after she job shadowed in April. So that's been really wonderful. And he's been instrumental in trying to connect other alumni back with our particular programs. Jeff Abbott has been at pretty much every single event. He's hired three different students. And he was hoping to hire more because he came back to the job fair again. He's from the class of 98. Um, he works for Creed and Catering. Tim Halley, um, again from Monk. Ken Mungin, um, he's from the class of 91. He's from Fidelity. He's come back from, for a couple of our career fairs. He came back for the Oak Middle School career fair. Um, and the, these, we, and Darius Corcoran, of course, had offered um, the job to, to the student from Millis Public Schools. We've had alumni from the class of 1966, this wonderful man named Ron Whittle. He's there at the bottom. Um, he came to talk about his career in, um, as a, a Vietnam veteran, and mm -hmm. the students really gravitated towards him. Um, and we've, so he's, he's one of the older um, alumni that we've had engaged back with us, and he had a wonderful time. 
and through the, the class of 2019. So it's a very broad spectrum of experiences, et cetera. Um, so let's see, graduate. Okay, so yeah. So, um, so our next, the next way we've been engaging alumni is not just through inviting them and engaging them, but we've been, we created a platform, and I, again, I think last year when we spoke to you, we were going to be creating this platform. It's called spsconnects.com, and I, before I forget, I want anybody who's watching who's an alum from Shrewsbury High School, if you haven't already connected on that site, please do so. It's a place where um, Shrewsbury alumni exclusively can connect with one, one another. They can find classmates. It's like a... Um, it's almost like a, a Facebook type of thing where they, there's some links on the left-hand side and then there's a, a feed page in the middle and in the middle is where we post a lot of things that are going on to keep our alumni engaged in, in what's been happening. Um, but alumni can find their classmates, they can offer and look for jobs and internships, which some people have already been posting. They can provide mentoring for our juniors and seniors. Right now we haven't opened it up to our students, but we're hoping to at some point to be able to offer that to juniors and seniors so they can type in and say, okay, I'm looking for somebody who went to Northeastern and who's doing neuroscience. Um, I'd love to be able to connect with them and find out what that experience was like, what other colleges they had looked at, et cetera. Um, we're hoping to, um, to drive engagement that's leading to um, enhanced mentoring between our alumni and our students so we don't, it's not just during those infrequent times that we have the job fairs or career fairs. And then we can grow our, our pool of future volunteers and donors and try to get more alumni. Um, we're finding the alumni through reunions, through we um, ask for the counseling department to give us the graduating seniors' emails that are not school emails. Um, we post a lot of information or requests on social media. We have an Instagram account, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So we're really trying to engage as, as many as possible. In the coming year, we hope to expand the number um, of, of members that are on the SPS Connect site and hopefully at least doubling it. So we touched on this a little bit, um, Angie had mentioned it, about the funding for career exploration. Um, and it's not free. <laughs> um, the picture on the right-hand side is actually a picture of um, the Worcester uh, Sports Management Summit that we sent our, our students to and a variety of other colleges and high schools had gone to that as well in order to get there. Um, we had to have transportation in order to get there, and the number of students who went was beyond the size of one of our vans. So um, we had to hire um, something uh, a smaller uh, bus through AA transportation. Um, we also had to pay for registration fees for the students to be able to go there, and we never want that to be a barrier for our students to be able to participate in um, external programming, if you want to call it that. So um, since the start of the school year that we've been um, collecting money through or raising money through the Colonial Fund. We've raised $61,183 for career exploration, and that includes the Wind Waste um, Innovation Donation. So far, the Colonial Fund has paid for um, additional resources to manage the student attendance at these career exploration opportunities. Um, and Todd had mentioned just a lot of the back and forth about connecting with students, which one do you want to go to, okay, what time can you show up, how many students, sending it back to the people that are hosting them, et cetera. And then the transportation, as I had talked about, and then the registration, and then um, it paid also for the community partnerships breakfast. And we hope to have a final end of year appeal also to continue these programs for next year. And we hope that by sharing um, student feedback, comments, and all our pictures, that that will engage um, and, and hopefully bring some more donations as well. So in summary, um, students will continue to be provided with school and career readiness opportunities to learn and practice the core skills and competencies needed for school, career, and life success um, in the 21st century. We're very optimistic that we can and will provide students with career technical education opportunities that extend beyond the classroom walls. Um, again, by creating partnerships with area organizations and businesses, such as the Blackstone Hub. Continue collaboration. It's all about collaboration, and that will continue over the summer as members of the high school leadership and counseling teams work to design student-specific career pathways, course schedules, and we will continue to identify companies and businesses with whom we can closely partner to expand um, all of these experiences for our students throughout their entire high school education. 
Thank you for listening. That was a lot. <laughs> um, and at this time, mm -hmm. if you have any questions or comments. Great. Thank you. I think this is such a timely report as we move to town meeting. I mean, know last year at town meeting, it was an issue that had come up in I know we have a very detailed report in our packet with the links, so anyone who wants to dive into it deeper can, and Dr. Sawyer, that would be up on the school department website. We'll post it, yep, and I'll, I'll send out a link in my next update as well. Perfect, thank you. Any questions or comments? Um, my first comment is to um, Adam and Louisa. I'm really glad that you took part in the, the getting out there and going to the Fire Academy and to Shrewsbury Federal Credit Union. Um, I also, when I was in high school, did something. I always wanted to be a teacher, um, and we were given the opportunity that we could shadow for a few weeks. Um, and I did that, and it, it had the same effect where I got into the classroom and I was like, yep, this is what I want to do. But there are some kids that did it as well, and they got in there and they're like, I don't think so. This is not what I wanted to do. And they, it had changed the way that they approached college or after. So. I applaud you for doing that. That's great. Um, it's a good first step. It's a great adult decision um, to do. Um, the only questions that I had um, is going back to like the career pathways. So I know that the six pathways that were created were because of you know the classes that we have at the high school right now. Um, but was there any student feedback for that in terms of like were there kids that were like, oh, I'm really, I mean, there's obviously a demand for business um, but like with the TV production and film, there doesn't look that as much. And then I guess the second question too is the outreach to the families and the students, the ones that said, no, thank you, I don't, I don't wanna do that. Did they give a reason as to why they didn't wanna go with these pathways? So answer the, your first question, question <laughs> first, and I think you can maybe answer mm -hmm. the second question because mm -hmm. you did the family follow up. <clears throat> So there's a huge demand for TV production. We've seen the numbers actually rise through course selection process, so it might not be a pathway, but we've getting, we're getting more and more students involved in our TV, TV production program. I think it's a function of um, coming back from COVID, we're doing daily announcements of a TV studio now that are produced, and there's just a lot more engagement. I think that people, students think it's, um, I know it's technical, but yet it's cool and fun. Mm -hmm. So the numbers there are the highest we've seen since I've been uh, for course requests. So it's like, yeah, there's some, ch not necessarily on a pathway, but certainly when you take TV1 as a semester course, that could lead to TV2. So it certainly is, you don't necessarily have to be on a pathway to explore, but then typically what ends up happening, the uh, retention rate is significant within that programming because mm -hmm. kids enjoy it and want to continue on. So we'll, we'll have to report on that next year with class size and also uh, our class rise report and then see what happens in the coming years, but the, the enrollment requests are, are, are highest they've ever been. Mm -hmm. And then follow up with families around mm -hmm. pathways. And yes, the reason why. yes. Um, <clears throat> some families, you know, didn't give a reason. I did reach out to several families who had further questions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and some of it when I was talking actually to a parent today of a eighth grade student, she, you know, she's like, I just want my daughter to go and do freshman year and see where that brings her. Mm -hmm. So I think some of it is sort of the age and just getting to the high school. Um, some of the families did say that they were looking for more of a vocational pathway, um, like Asabit's pathways. Mm -hmm. um, and then just some didn't, you know, really kind of give a reason why. Mm -hmm. um, but lots of questions, so, mm -hmm. which was great. Yeah, um, th thank you so much. I also want to thank Louisa and Adam for joining us tonight and spending a fairly lengthy evening with us. But I really, it's important for us to hear your perspectives mm -hmm. and what worked. And for also us to hear the stories that, that, to your point, maybe didn't so much. Like, ah, I tried it. I'm thrilled you've, you've, you've had really positive experiences. Um, if I can pivot a little bit to some of the financial resources necessary to, to sustain the work, I want to thank you, of course, Kathleen, for all of the, all of the funds generated. I'm. I'm always very appreciative of that and very anxious because if those funds dry up in, a, in off years, what programming do we have to shrink um, as we rely on sort of external outside our traditional budget? Um, so sort of two, two questions that are on my mind. Um, it looks like the DESE grant is, is a pretty lengthy one and that it's got a long tail. And so am I right that we, won't, we wouldn't find out for a, almost a full year from okay. now? And then let's just play it out a little bit. We get that grant. What does that mean? What could we maybe do with it? And then I have a second finance question. That's maybe fine. I can hold that for a second. Yeah. Can we, we stay on that one because I want to pivot to staffing mm -hmm. if I can. But what does that look like and what could we maybe do with it? 
I will just hold off. We'll just hope we get it, but what would, what would it look like if we did? Well, I, th I go back to our um, visits with the Blackstone Hub, mm -hmm. and as Angie referenced, Milford, Bellingham, and a couple of other communities pay money. Mm -hmm. um, I think $1,800 mm -hmm. for a career exploration for a group of X amount of students who okay. will go twice a week for first trimester or whatnot. But there's, uh, I see us spending money towards providing students trade vocational technical mm -hmm. opportunities at places like the hub where they have classrooms and machinery and equipment, um, ensuring that students are any student who is interested is able to be transported there and back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, um, some, Angie and I have been in on uh, phone calls with other districts where um, school districts partner up with some business folks who are giving a sizable donation along with the pathway money to provide, again, the trade and vocational opportunities outside of the school walls and mm -hmm. in addition transportation. Um, so partnerships mm -hmm. like that, and I know that's just one example, but it, it feels like a, it's a very um, promising one. Can you think mm -hmm. about Can the I, examples, or Lindsay? No, no, it, it's, uh, I guess, um, so some of the funds we could potentially use for transportation. Yes. We could potentially mm -hmm. use to, let's say, incentivize businesses. This, this is a time intensive for businesses. You're talking about that career day for Olympus. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible commitment on a business's part to, for their staff and time to both plan it and then execute. And they're, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to decide there's a return on investment mm -hmm. for them. So I'm thrilled they've decided to, to invest in us. But are you saying that we could maybe a company like that sort of help use these funds to say, hey, Olympus, they may Day sponsor or something like that? Yes, that and um, use funds to pay for programming at the hub. So there are students who okay. go to Whitensville from all over, mm -hmm. um, and they spend every Tuesday and Thursday there, there seniors for a semester, yep. for example. The, yes, Mil well, that? Milford has a program um, I think they said they had 12 seniors. They go to Milford High in the morning for their English mm -hmm. classes, their graduation requirements, and then they go in the afternoon. Two days a week, I think they go to the hub or three, and then the other two to a business. Okay. Um, local local to business. Milford, and these yeah. businesses will, off, will offer them a full-time job upon completion of their certifications through the hub, their machinery, their welding. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a significant cost of money, and mm -hmm. I know Milford got grants and things to, to pay for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. I lied. I said I had two. I have That's three. Funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> this, top, this topic is like so yeah, very um, big. present. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm, um, um, how, how, we have mentioned before in, in these meetings or in other conversations, how do we think about community colleges as part of the package and ensemble and so I was a little surprised I didn't see mm -hmm. a QCC mentioned and I but I know there's been conversations and so right. is there a I don't know if it's not all conversations lead to lead to programs I get that and so but I'm just wondering how we think about community colleges as being a piece of of this for mm -hmm. students would I, mean, I don't know Dr. Lazad if you have thoughts well, or I, Mr. I can start and maybe Angie and Jane can fill in some the answer can also we, be we have, it's complicated and we're no, still we working have, on no, it that's have, okay we have, we have brought representatives <laughs> representatives in from QCC to talk about program, particularly their um, fabrication studio, uh, the Fab Lab mm -hmm. that they sure. have there, mm -hmm. and looking at partnerships and opportunities where we can look at early college uh, dual enrollment around specific certificate programming that can address some of the trades. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, okay. early college dual enrollment programming, and then we talked mm -hmm. about, we this initial, I forget, mm -hmm. it might have been last month or a month and a half, it's been, yeah. um, we talked about do we mirror, do we actually offer the courses, take their curriculum and offer it with a professor within our building, or do we actually mm. send kids over there? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're in conversations place. around that. Okay. Look at what all the um, kind of prerequisites are for those certificate programs at QCC. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is there's a series of kind of foundational courses that we could, we've talked about. Again, this is all kind of just talking is like, can we offer those foundational courses within a high school setting or a dual enrollment setting where we can have students who might want to pursue that, investigate it, and then almost, I don't say get a leg up, but certainly mm -hmm. 
be advanced like mm -hmm. uh, a dual enrollment program would be. So there are programs in there, and if you uh, we I forget exactly what we talked about, but we talked we identified four or five programs specifically that we thought we could potentially partner with QCC on. We just haven't finished that conversation. Okay. I think. As okay. you see, there's so many things going yeah. on, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and we're trying to mitigate what's happening mm -hmm. um, and provide students great opportunities as well. Right. Uh, we want to try and do that. So yeah, there's a lot of it, we just can't spin up all this stuff all at once. That's really really difficult, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and it takes time and it takes energy and it takes in addition to doing everything else we need to do it's like it's certainly challenging we're up for the challenge don't get me wrong um but yeah we haven't kind of finalized that conversation sure and the follow-up hasn't been as quick from qcc as it mm -hmm. has from um yeah. blackstone so we were some other sure to yeah our teeth okay I, I mean you have to you have a limited amount of time and you got to try to figure out how to yeah. prioritize best ways to spend it and mm -hmm. in many ways i think for the community as potentially frustrating as it might be. I'm glad you, you mm -hmm. the two students here have had some good experiences. Mm -hmm. I see this year as sort of a planning year of a mm -hmm. post our change in ACIBET. There were reasons to do this outside of ACIBET, right? There are reasons yeah. to have kids un understand and have experiences with careers, but that this year is really about trying to kind of figure out how do we best use our time. So I, I that we want you to do it all does not mean you can. And so the questions are just sort of like the things that have yeah. been out there. I'm now on my last question. There Sorry. You go. Uh, <laughs> um, on the budget, we've obviously just mm -hmm. recently finalized the budget and thinking mm -hmm. about budget for next year and budget for mm -hmm. town meeting, but it, I can't help but notice the suggestion that an FT might be helpful mm -hmm. in business. And so it was mentioned, but mentioned somewhat briefly, and yet at the same time, very aware of when we think about space at the high school, how are we balancing is like where we are and thinking about that. And Dr. Sorry, feel free to chime, chime in, whoever mm -hmm. this makes sense to, but as we think about if we wanted to do that, there's obviously a desire for some more business mm -hmm. classes. I remember mm -hmm. sitting in that chair not long ago, getting letters from students around our right. civics, kids in our civics program saying, you need to do more. I need more mm -hmm. financial literacy. So the, the desire is there. But what do we have to give up? Because uh, I've now learned that's how this works, because we mm -hmm. don't have enough space. And so how are, we, how are we sort of thinking through what that might look like? And um, just well, the time, me, yeah, the time me, around budget is true <coughs> here. Sure. Yeah. Well, let me just start by saying, I mean, the budget that's gone to town meeting is the budget for town yeah, meeting. It's right. the budget that mm -hmm. should be the bottom line appropriated, and I'm, I'm sure town mm -hmm. meeting will support that as they yep. do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the context is that every fiscal year, I mean, we don't live in an organization where the personnel budget that is you know, mm -hmm. on the line item for that goes to town meeting is where we end up. Uh, we, we've got numbers moving all the time with different demands over the course mm -hmm. of the year, whether that is, you know, uh, students who move in and might require mm -hmm. some special education pieces, right. hires we make that come in under budget, you know, some that come in over budget. We're monitoring that closely. Uh, Ms. Malone tells me we're, mm -hmm. we're running, you know, in the black under budget right now for the appointments we've already made for next year. So that's a good mm -hmm. signal. Um, and, you know, sometimes based on course enrollment, mm -hmm. At the middle school level, at the high school level, sometimes we shift some FTEs around. Um, sometimes that's through attrition, and sometimes we add within the context of something we can cover uh, in the budget. So I think in the report you received, mm -hmm. uh, the indication was we've just you know we've we've determined there's a pretty high level of demand for these business courses, and if we could add an FTE within the budget that will be approved, mm -hmm. um, that would help mm -hmm. you know, satisfy that demand. Uh, I think that would be a good idea if we can make it work. I think we need to wait a few weeks to see how the other hires for next year are shaping up to make sure it's within that within that context. But you know, if the school committee you know feels positively about that, I, you know, I think that's something that's likely that we'd be able to do. We can certainly report back to you on that. In terms of the space, it sounds like with the movement of the Rise program out of the space at the high school to the center of town, mm -hmm. that will free up enough space for you know if one FTE were going to be added would be able to to make that work is that is that a fair assessment that's, sim that's a simplified version yes we have space <laughs> I, know, I know there's moving pieces yeah. Yeah. but it frees up nope. some space yeah. at the bottom is the bottom that's the bottom line yeah we do have okay. space yeah Perfect. while we're still essentially maxed out and that's mm -hmm. why you know mm -hmm. we need to explore making an addition to the high school down the line great thank, thank you very much thank you. I appreciate it just uh, wanted to thank you overall for mm -hmm. the report it's a lot of information and i would encourage people to go online and look at it um, a lot of really good links in there as well to like all of the different efforts mm -hmm. that you guys have been making as a group collectively um, and also like the, the to thank the students for sharing your experiences mm -hmm. tonight it's so helpful to hear from you and to hear what's working and what the things that you're connecting with um, so we really appreciate you being here with us tonight um, i 
really think the initiative on the career pathways is a good one. I, I'm glad that we're starting, and uh, you know, obviously it's a work in progress. We'll, but I think it's um, even students that may not have been looking at ASABET yeah. are going to have these different pathways available to them, and I think it's going to be very helpful for kids that may be interested in business to take some business classes and to kind of see if that's where they want to go towards mm -hmm. college. And um, you know, same thing with biotech. So. Uh, I really, I think it's a really good initiative, and I'm really happy to, to see that um, being put in place. Um, additionally, um, the Blackstone Valley Hub, I think that seems like a great opportunity. Um, it really, it seems like it's fitting what we're looking for, and I think it may really be able to resonate with some students, so I'm glad that you, you were able to discover that. Um, with regard to alumni support, I was interested that um, in the student survey that you sent out, like one of the number one things that every student kind of checked the box for was connecting with alumni mm -hmm. on their career opportunities and getting advice. So I think anything that we can do to strengthen and continue um, with those efforts is is just a really a, a, a great opportunity. And um, an idea that I kind of came to mind was um, I know the students, the seniors that are exiting, um, they need to be doing, you know, the, the checking the box in score. Maybe we could have them check the box um, on getting enrolled in SPS Connects before they um, matriculate. So that way we can capture over 400 alum mm -hmm. before they leave, um, you know, get all their contact information, um, mm -hmm. get them kind of right in the pipeline. Um, I know that, you know, they're kind of at the beginning of their, their journeys, mm -hmm. but at least we'll, we'll have some good contact information for them. Um, so, but thank you very much. It was the extremely helpful report tonight. And first, I want to thank the students. I think, Adam, what you said, I think the first thing you said is, what if I don't like it? And that resonated with me because I'm thinking, you know, we've all done that. Like, what if I start on this path and I don't, what if you didn't, want, you want to be a fireman and then you went and you're like, no. Nope. It's the best thing because now you know you want this. And when you go to college, it's expensive. So I think this is, this is the the information that we need to have come back from our students. And Louisa, you talked about, you know, getting this job. And I know I was a finance major in college and did an internship because I thought I wanted to go into banking. No. I was like, <laughs> nope, this is not for me. So I think if these are the really hands-on experiences that we want our students to have. And Dr. Lott, you talked about, you know, we've been doing this for a while. You know, I think some people in the community think we have not been doing this. but. This has been underlying, and the ACIPIT issue kind of brought everything a little more to the forefront. So during our budget conversations this year, we talked a lot about career and technical and making sure that we did have funding in the proposed FY24 budget to move this forward. And I think that's great, but you know, it's a, it, we need to do it right. We need to be thoughtful. We need to make sure it's sustainable as well. And I love the Blackstone Hub, that hands-on piece, because I – I like what we're doing in-house, but I think those other things that are, you know, traditional trades do need to be explored because there are students who do want that and we need to provide that opportunity. And one of my biggest concerns, though, is this is a lot of work for all of you. And as we think of going forward with our budgeting next year, uh, we have to make sure that we're providing enough bodies to do this work. It, it's significant amount, and it has to all be you know, looking for fundraising, looking for opportunities. So I think for our committee as we move forward to, to make sure that we have enough staff to actually do this because your, your plates are already very full and I'm concerned about that just as a community member as well. Um, and I also, I love the, the alumni connection. I think, you know, when we're all out there, connections help. Who do you, who do you know in this field or that field? I mean, my husband still has people come to do internships during the summer, and most of them are Shrewsbury High alum. Mm -hmm. It's because of people that we know, and his boss said, how do you find them? Well, they're, they're great Shrewsbury kids. They've had a good education, so we like to brag about that with him. But thank you, I think this is very, very, very timely because we will probably be asked about this at town meeting, and this is a lot of information, and I think you know, we looked at our strategic goals and priorities for the next five years, and we're, we're moving forward with it, but there's a lot of work to be done, but there's also a lot of groundwork that's been laid, so thank you so much.
Dr. Sori, any comments or questions? Thank you. To, uh, a couple things. Uh, first off, I, uh, congratulations, Adam, on uh, going mm -hmm. to uh, Anna Maria and, and fire science and emergency management. That you're passionate about that, and that that's exciting mm -hmm. to me. Um, Louisa, can you share with the with the committee what your plans are for next year? Yeah. So um, a lot of people expect that I'm going into finance, which is not really <laughs> like my path. Um, I'm going to QCC for two years, and I'm doing pre-pharmacy there, Excellent. and I plan on transferring to MCPHS to further my doctorates in pharmacy. And so, yeah, that's my plan. <laughs> well, I know you shared that with me uh, when I was doing my banking. Uh, yep. <laughs> asked me about it. And, uh, um, you know, another great example of uh, a pathway that our, our counseling department helps make students aware of, which is the two-year program at, at Quinn Sigmund, and they have lots of connections mm -hmm. to different yeah. universities, the UMass and, and State University system, WPI, MCPHS, there, there's a lot of, it's a really, and so I think what, you know, certainly you've learned the financial piece because that is a, a much uh, a better financial uh, investment in, in terms of that program, and, and certainly wish you well with that. But one of the things that I think, you know, you, you, you understood Adam's passion mm -hmm. uh, for his excitement, what he's going to be doing, and I think that with Louisa, and obviously, I mean, these are these are two seniors in high school. I would not have been this poised in a public <laughs> meeting when I was at this age, uh, and I and I think that, uh, you know, because I am a customer at Shrewsbury Federal Credit Union, and I've, and and Louisa has, has uh, you know served me, yes, I know, and, and uh, it's making withdrawals to pay for my children generally, uh, but and, uh, you know, her customer service skills are outstanding, um, and I and I think that, uh, you know, we know. Going back, it's always been an issue for mm -hmm. teenagers who maybe aren't blooming yet in terms of their eye contact mm -hmm. or their speaking and things like that. But that is a skill set I mm -hmm. would suggest even more today um, that that is important um, and is a differentiator. And for through these job shadowings, internships, pathways experience, all these kinds of things, um, if we can provide these opportunities, it's opportunities for kids to, to blossom and grow and be in a different environment other than school. Um, and with adults, like you said, Louisa, mm -hmm. and with, it feels a little more real. Um, I don't love the real life. I think school's real life too, but it, that idea of sort of real world experiences um, outside the walls of the, of the traditional school are extremely valuable. And I really appreciate the work that's been done to provide these opportunities and there's more coming. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot here, as, as you've all said. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's one thing for me with the ACIBIT piece, and I'm sure we'll speak to this to some degree at town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, as we've looked at that, uh, the, the reality of what our students experience there and where they've gone. You know, we know that kids from Shrewsbury who have gone to Acibet don't cluster around like one or two or three particular shops. They're across all of them. Um, they don't always get their first choice. We know that of Acibet generally, because they have to report this to the state, only about 20% of the students end up even working in the field that they studied at Acibet. Um, but what we do know from our experiences over the years is that students who have a proclivity for hands-on learning who want that more broad experience in, in the workplace outside of school. Um, those are some of the benefits that they receive with that type of education. So, you know, replicating those kinds of experiences through a career technical education approach, pathways, internships, potential partnerships with businesses, um, those are all things that I think can provide those sorts of benefits that students would have had going through ASABET. Um, we certainly feel a sense of urgency because we know we have, you know, ninth grade students who would have been at Asabet this year. Mm -hmm. um, and when we think about their pathway over the next, uh, you know, through the, the class of 2026, um, you know, we want to make sure that they're benefiting from these types of things and we're trying to move forward quickly. But as Ms. Fritz talked about, we want to be judicious about it. We want to be thoughtful. We want to make sure that what we do makes sense and is high quality, uh, not just jump at the first thing that might come along because, you know, it's important that those experiences are good experiences. I think growing the Project Lead the Way programming at Shrewsbury High School over the next couple of years with more options and, and potentially, you know, some of these other things, you know, more biomedical. I know we only had a few kids who were maybe interested in aspen interested in that, but I suspect over time we're going to have a lot of kids. In, I mean, I think what they talk about that, uh, the program that we've developed for, you know, medical sciences, mm -hmm. there's going to be kids involved with that who are going to be jumping at saying, I can take some biomedical classes at high school and get credit mm -hmm. for it. Um, so there's there's a lot of work that's happening. I do worry about how much of a uh, of a lift this is, mm -hmm. um, and I absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to need to put some some human resources behind it. Uh, every vocational technical school has at least one, probably multiple people who coordinate 
those internships and job experiences and, and co-ops and things of that nature because it's just a lot of work that has to happen. Um, and if we're gonna make, make that kind of adjustment to provide those opportunities for our kids, we need to make sure we have people who can do the work. And it can't be something that's on top of their other full-time job. Um, so those are things we'll be looking to as we move deeper into the summer planning, into next year. Uh, but I am very confident that uh, we are going to be, you know, as we said, this was a strategic priority for us going back five years. Um, Dr. Lazat's position was, mm -hmm. was, gen was, was created in part to move this forward. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we needed to take her offline mm -hmm. for a couple of years mm -hmm. to take care of Patton as their principal. Mm -hmm. This is only her first year back in the role, and a lot of this has happened. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Flynn, who's newly you know, w with us, our school, is doing some excellent work moving this forward. Uh, Mr. Bazidlo, on top of all the things that he has to do as the high school principal. Uh, so I, I do believe that we've moved the needle a lot this year. I think we're you know, kind of in that place now where things are gonna start falling into place and then we can really start to provide very concrete benefits for our students. So thank you for all the work that's been done. And I, and I certainly should mention Ms. Cohane mm -hmm. and the fundraising yes. and the alumni connecting because that network is going to be key. And I, I can imagine mm -hmm. we're gonna have businesses locally more than we even have now mm -hmm. that have connections with Shrewsbury alumni who are gonna be mm -hmm. providing opportunities for our students and that's very exciting. Um, so I, I think that there, there's a lot to like here. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of hard work ahead, but I, I think we're on the right pathway. So thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, next on the agenda, we're going to have an update on the Assabet Valley Collaborative. Um, each year, we are required to have four updates. Uh, recently, they approved a tuition uh, rate and fee increase for FY24, and Dr. Sawyer will provide a summary to us. Thank you. See, this lets me disconnect. <laughs> Perhaps not. There we go. Um, this is a very brief update, um, and you know, as Ms. Fritz mentioned, this is a requirement of the of the law to provide multiple updates each year to the the school committee and to the public uh, regarding our membership uh, in the collaborative uh, and um, you know some of the benefits that brings to us and how things are going. Um, this is just a very simple update that the uh, Board of Directors, I, I represent Shrewsbury on the Board of Directors uh, as part of the collaborative, um, did vote most recently to uh, set the rates for tuitions for next year. Uh, I think this is a kind of a simple story. A lot during the budget process mm -hmm. was discussed about how um, the state approved that the uh, private special education school providers were able to, to give a, make a 14% increase this year uh, in tuition rates, which was huge. I think overly um, large from my perspective, but that it, that's the reality that we're, we are dealing with. Um, I think that the uh, percentages you see here, which are mostly 4% increases, mm -hmm. is a couple of programs that are a little bit higher. Um, and these were uh, you know, brought forward to the, the ASIBIT board by the executive director there um, with very clear rationale around why um, this seemed to be uh, an amount that would uh, enable their program to move forward. Uh, but you know, in the inflation in environment we're in right now, uh, I thought was very reasonable. Um, you can see from the sheet that's in your packet, there's a variety of programs. Um, one other key thing to mention is that as a member community, we get a discount mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if we are utilizing those programs for, for our students in different ways. Um, and uh, that's something that for us uh, you know, can, can be helpful as well. Um, this was all already priced into the budget that went forward to uh, town meeting. Um, again, I think a very reasonable overall, typically 4% rate increase. Um, and uh, um, you know, whether that's programming we're accessing through students or transportation, which is a, one of the biggest financial benefits mm -hmm. we get from being part of the collaborative, um, to be able to partner with a larger you know, consortium of districts to uh, get a better deal on sending kids to uh, private placements on, on a day-to-day -day basis with bus transportation um, through the, the company Vanpool is who has the contract with Asabet. And by sharing rides, by sharing costs with other districts and having that larger economy of scale, um, we we've, we've benefit a great deal from that over time. Um, so again, just a brief update. Uh, I think that uh, it makes a lot of sense, but and I appreciate the work that the collaborative did uh, to try to maintain the lowest rate possible mm -hmm. within an environment where obviously inflation is affecting right. all organizations in different ways. Um, so happy to answer any questions, uh, but that is that is the update mm -hmm. this evening relative to us. Any um, questions or comments? Just real quick, I want to sort of appreciate your representation for us, Dr. Sawyer, on this, on this um, mm -hmm. um, important committee, but also really <laughs> to say, 
a four percent increase on on transportation costs I, I know. I, that's like unheard of right now mm -hmm. so the fact that they're able to kind of continue to offer that to us and keep those keep those other dollars in the district to provide other programming or to allow us to get the tutoring support or other such things that they're doing is is, is just a huge benefit to us um certainly we have plenty of experience with inflationary yeah. growth that are a lot higher than that <laughs> uh -huh. so mm -hmm. thank you anyone else well, great. Thank you for that update. And I agree with Lindsay. That was a surprise, and it, we were very happy to see it. So <laughs> thank you. Okay, next we have our minutes from our meeting on April 26, 2023. You've all had a chance to take mm -hmm. a look at them. Any yes. changes or corrections? No. There being none, we can have them accepted as distributed. And we do not need to go into executive session this evening. So if there's nothing further, I'll accept a motion to adjourn for the evening. So moved. Second. Roll call vote is required. Ms. Sh Shariba Poor, I'm ma making sure I say your name, you, pronouncing it correctly. You got it. Because no one pronounces my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ms. Boucher? Aye. Aye. Ms. Heffernan? Aye. Myself? Aye. Thank you and good night. <laughs>